welcome to Render School. This is uh, V-Ray Basics. Uh, it's a uh, free course, just going through all of the basics of, uh, of V-Ray and uh, setting it up and working in a linear workflow and, uh, and the stuff you need to know. Um, this first uh, class or video is uh, on setting up V-Ray to do uh, to work in a linear workflow which is uh, of the utmost importance for uh, making sure that your CG looks uh, believable. Um, so let me just switch to V-Ray here real quick. Um, I'm not going to go into uh, what this whole linear thing is because it's, it's a math thing. And basically it means that if, if you're not working in a linear workflow, the, the, the mathematics behind um, what's going on in your render is going to be wrong and of course you don't want that but it's uh, something you need to set up so that you uh, get around um, this uh, this wrong way of calculating your images and if you want to know more about it um, look it up on Wikipedia actually because uh, there's a lot of math going into it and that's not what render school is about render school is about making sure that your uh, images come out right so I'm just going to really quickly show you um, how to set up V-Ray to work in a linear fashion and um, there's a couple of different ways of doing it so I'm just going to quickly go through those. So uh, let me just create a uh, simple scene here just so that we can uh, we actually see what's going on. Um, and when I said simple, I, uh, I meant it. So, this is our scene. Uh, let me go ahead and create a V-Ray rectangular light. And, let's see, now we're waiting for something. Here we go. Let's just, uh, Get this light in here, scale it up a bit as such, and we will hit render. And this is how it looks. Uh, you might be thinking this is very dark. Um, light kind of disappears extremely fast. Uh, it's just, well, it goes into darkness. And uh, that's the predicament that we want to get around because this is not realistic. Now the first thing we want to do is go into the V-Ray common tab of uh, the render settings and switch to the V-Ray frame buffer. Um, so that when we hit render we get this one instead which is really nice for loads of reasons. Um, so let's just get off this guy. But uh, to, to look at this image which is actually a linear image displayed on uh, an sRGB monitor. Uh, to look at it right, the way it's supposed to, to look, you want to hit this little sRGB button down here. It's tiny, but uh, you'll find it. So if you hit that, then all of a sudden we actually get the right um, like fall off in the lighting and, and all that stuff that we wanted. So in reality, that's all good, and we're now V-Ray will always render linear, but um, now we're actually seeing it the way it's supposed to be seen. But um, we're not done yet. There's a couple of things that we uh, we want to uh, to do. First of all, V-Ray works in a linear workflow or a linear manner, which means that uh, stuff like uh, using the adaptive DMC um, for anti-aliasing and general like sampling of lights and stuff will be done on this uh, uncorrected image. But since we will be looking at it like this, all of a sudden we can see all this noise that would fall below the threshold. We'll, we'll get back to that uh, in a later video. But it just means that we're not going to get all the sampling we want. So we need to tell V-Ray to um, take this uh, sRGB image into account when when uh, doing the sampling. 
And we do that by jumping down into color mapping in the V-Ray tab and setting the gamma to 2.2, which is monitor RGB. And then we'll click don't affect colors. So we're not going to color correct the image, we're just going to tell V-Ray to look at a color corrected version of it when sampling. I hope that made sense. But what we'll get now is some slightly cleaner noise. Now my settings are really low, but it does clean it up. Uh, and since we checked this don't affect colors, um, it's only in the calculation of, of samples it's doing this. So we're still getting all the uh, correct lighting values and all that, that that we wanted to. So step one is now done. V-Ray is linear to begin with. We're looking at it as it should be looked at on an sRGB monitor, which most of our monitors are. And we're telling V-Ray to uh, be aware that we'll be looking at it in sRGB or gamma 2.2. So therefore, uh, please make sure that you clean up the noise and all that uh, dependent as it, if it was to be rendered at uh, 2.2. But since we have this guy on, we're not actually changing the colors. Okay, I hope that made some kind of sense. And in reality, just know what to do. Um, don't worry too much about it, because it's, it's just one of those things that you want to make sure that you always do. So, uh, <clears throat> the next thing that we need to take into account is that since everything is considered linear by default for from uh, from V-Ray's point of view, that goes for colors and textures as well. And there's two ways of getting around this. Um, the simple way is to click this linear workflow guy and hit render and go into sRGB and all of a sudden stuff will kind of look like it did before uh, but without the sRGB button pressed. So everything is going to be darkened down. and what what really happens is that V-Ray will take any color it finds in your uh, in your textures and gamma correct those to uh, to fit within like, pretty much the, the reverse of 2.2, which is it will apply a gamma of 0 0.4545 on everything, and this is kind of nice because um, it's it it does everything by itself. But there's also a little bit of, uh, like, it's a simple way of doing it, but in my eyes it's a bit annoying that it does it in everything and, and I'm left without any sort of control. Um, if you just want to really quickly render something, by all means, hit this button and you'll be good to go. But if you want to do it um, in a more traditional manner where uh, you have control over what you're doing, uh, please follow along for the next couple of minutes, and I will show you how that's done. Now, um, let's start out by giving this guy a new material, and if we render it, see, we get this really bright thing, and that's because the color here, the gray color, which is like a 50% gray, hasn't been color corrected or gamma corrected. Um, to fit within, uh, the, the, to, to actually take into account that we're looking at it on this RGB monitor. So that means we have to gamma this guy down um, to a gamma of 0.4545 um, to actually get the value that we needed. Of course you can just wing it and get something that looks nice, but say that this is, uh, uh, say, this red color that uh, your client really needs in the logo or whatever, you want to make sure that it's uh, the actual, actual right color. So um, for, for, for pure colors and for textures, what you want to do here is add a texture, and I actually thought I had this guy here, um, as a gamma correct node. And the cool thing about this is that it will take an image or whatever you want in here as a value, but you can also just set the color. So, say this is the color we want to hit. That's what we want to get out of the render. 
so you use that as a value and gamma corrected to 0.4545 in all the channels and lo and behold when we render it we actually get that color now, if we hadn't done this uh, sorry, I just paid for something uh, let me just close down my mail if we didn't, if we set the camera correction back so that it's not really doing anything we get this over bright weird dull version of this which is not at all what we wanted so uh, let's get it back as such hit render and we're happy uh, you want to use this for pretty much any like procedural textures or whatever you, you want to pop in there you can use it for file notes as well but if, uh, if you are reading a file there is a better way so let's have a look at that better way on uh, this guy here so assign a material again it's a V-Ray material uh, gonna get rid of this guy here and hit file the question is where do I have a file we can use uh, I should actually have found this out of time but let's grab this guy so now we're getting these green stripes and I don't think they actually kind of look right, but uh, but they're not. They are not as saturated as we want, not as contrasty as, as we want. So we'll need to uh, to gamma correct them. And the first way of doing that would be to pipe the file node through a gamma node and doing the, the correction in that manner. But the second way, which is uh, my favorite, since we have V-Ray running, you can, on the file node, create attributes uh, V-Ray and Texture Input Gamma. It's going to pop up down here and it's enabled and it's set to 2.2 as the input gamma and that's because it's a PNG and PNG, JPEG, pretty much uh, all the user's aspects are created to be just shown directly on a monitor which is this magical gamma 2.2. The cool thing about using this is that uh, first of all, you don't have to um, figure out what the inverted gamma is. You can just tell it, well, this is 2.2. Sometimes you'll even get like 1.8 stuff, um, which is a little bit it's a little bit weird, but such is life. Um, if you have an EXR, for example, as your texture, you can just set this to linear, and it's pretty much gonna just ignore it. Uh, you can set it to sRGB if you if you know that's what it is. You kind of know that here, but you can also set it manually to whatever gamma you want. I'm just going to go sRGB, hit render, and now we actually get the right rich green color that we had in the texture. And um, this is definitely my preferred method of doing it. And I know that the whole gamma thing, uh, like if you want a reflection color or whatever, and you're not using a texture, you have to create a node just to set a color. It seems uh, a little bit backwards, but it does make sense uh, in order to control what it is that you're doing. So that is, um, oh, well, that's one more thing actually. You want to make sure that you're using, just, just in case, using something like EXR, which is linear by default, because um, that way when something like Nuke reads a file, it's actually going to say, okay, this is an EXR file, and it will, uh, by and large, be an EXR file or sorry, a linear file, so let's keep working with it like that. So, just to uh, recap real quick, go ahead and use the V-Ray frame buffer, um, just so that you can uh, do this. And uh, render out as EXR files, set your color mapping, 2.2 in the gamma, don't affect colors. Um, pretty much, if, if I'll get back to this in a second. <laughs> Uh, and you could use the linear workflow or you could do the more well, the slower version of it but uh, which will give you more control. Just really quickly, just 
if we don't click this don't affect colors um, we will actually get this same image but when looking at it as a linear image so V-Ray will actually color correct it um, inside of the render which uh, is a little bit awkward because it, like, you, this is what you'll want to show on your screen then and that's all pale and and, uh, and, and just doesn't look good or doesn't work well so usually unless you come up with some some way of uh, using this just make sure that it's it's clicked and you're doing everything straight up uh, the way it's it's meant to be done so that's how you make sure to uh, that you're working in a linear workflow nice and simple and uh, it's something that you just want to make sure to always do whatever it is that you're rendering. Uh, your highlights will look better, your colors will look better, and your lights will act more natural, uh, which is, I guess, part and parcel of what we do. So, yeah, that's Linear Workflow. See you in the next video.